Hey guys, I want to talk a little bit about the fights last night. Uh, to my American brothers and sisters, I had the fortune of having a double great fight night last night. Uh, our friend and a man we genuinely respect who has been very, very supportive of Joe and I, uh, Mr. Danny Christie, won the bare knuckle uh, light heavyweight championship of the UK last night, the BKFC championship which is thriving and just moving on up as a organization body and we are so elated for Danny that we can't see straight we really really love Danny and uh, so Danny, if you see this, you do watch a lot of Joe's stuff. We love you. Joe loves you. And we wish you a big, big, huge congratulations. You're a hard worker. And in the beginning, uh, I don't think I've said this before, in the very beginning, uh, when Joe made a decision, yeah, I want a box, and was having trouble with the motivation of getting up early, of uh, uh, to run, or to uh, really just start really putting great efforts down. And every athlete, you have that. If you're a kid, you make it. You want to do something, but when it comes down to doing the work, it's very difficult to get in that mindset as a kid. And Danny, we want you to know that you, at the very beginning, uh, I believe it was the very beginning or towards the beginning of your. BFKC journey and your bare knuckle journey. Uh, we know you've done a lot of boxing uh, before, gloved boxing. But when you were at the very beginning, you were putting videos out. And you were like, here we go, folks. I'm on the way to the gym. I've got to get myself back in shape. And uh, then you'd go from the car to the, the running to uh, in the gym and you would give you did not you smart guy you wasn't giving everything away and I commend you for that you just giving tidbits which I tell all these other people why in the world you're gonna give everything away for free to show the other guys what you're doing but you put stuff up and it was just enough that Joe latched on. And that's because of you. That was the thing that every kid needs to have that switch clicked. You know, it needs to be clicked on in their head. And every kid will have something that will be that motivating factor that clicks that switch on. And for Joe Allen, it was Danny Christie. So we are so happy for you, so happy for you. Uh, and for those of you in North America who don't know who Danny Christie is, uh, you should go look him up on YouTube. Uh, his YouTube channel, I believe, is the, the real Danny Christie. And you should go look him up. Very interesting guy. He sparred with the Furies. Uh He's a nice guy. We are very fortunate with that. Uh, we have former uh, 
heavyweight crown contender, Matt Legg, who Joe also looks up to tremendously and has had very good positive words of encouragement for him. And that's what keeps him going, and we're very appreciative. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, on to the big North American thing, big Latin American thing. The fight last night with Danny, uh, with the fight last night with uh, Tank and Ryan. See the let down there? Okay. I say this an awful lot. I'm an old geezer. Old, old geezer. Put a prediction out. I kept telling everybody. Uh, well, I'm thinking even if Ryan takes it and gets a decision, they may give it to Tank because I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, if it's on the outside, and a lot of the time, most of the time, Tank is under in the scorecards, but then knocks a the guy out. What happened last night and what we saw last night is what's wrong with boxing in general. And it's terrible. And nobody under 40 can even think about seeing it, which is sickening because when you grow up with something and it's normal to you, you just think, well, that's, this is great. This the way it is. Uh... There's a wrong place to come to. We don't hand out lollipops and candy-coated malarkey here. I don't. What happened last night was you seen a reasonably tough guy. And I say reasonably because he's going to fold like a used lawn chair. The minute he's under huge adversity himself. But we seen a tough guy last night. Uh, Tank Davis. Punch a fella in the nose early in the fight. Y'all didn't see it. Or a few of you did. Uh, I saw it. We saw a guy get, and several others saw it, that know this sport. Not fan guys. And it's great fan guys. It's great. It's why you have the sport. But I'm talking in more in-depth people. People know what's going on. Know the history of the sport and whatnot. Here's, here, they saw this too. Uh, this was, as a matter of fact, who we were watching last night mentioned this. Boom. Straight up. Ryan's got punched in the nose. He's got a busted nose. And that's what we got. I don't know. Maybe we find out sometime during the day. Today it was just, it got broke. They'll probably say it got broke even if it didn't get broke. But we got, we got to see a kid get his nose busted. Something that goes on out or used to, uh, <laughs> go on out in schoolyards every day. See, little boys were allowed to fight, wrestle, tussle, and that kept little boys from going up in schoolhouses and shooting 30 people up or going into shopping malls and doing crazy mess. But we can no longer have a pecking order no more because it's not nice. So you end up having... Boys, typically boys, but girls too, with a lot of crazy in this world. But you saw a kid get bullied. Uh, you seen a, maybe a bully, you seen the flashy guy at school come in all cocky because he's got people around him 
telling him how great he is every day. Uh, I'm almost going to get on the religion side of this because it irks me. And you know what? I think I just damn well will. I think I just will. You had a boy that's uh, speaks it, believes it, receives it, because God's all about doing what he needs, not what God needs. It's about what you need. And God says he'll just give me everything. Yet they refuse to read the parts of the Bible where the king of all kings, the only real king ever, and the king of them all, didn't even own a donkey. So you be careful thinking you know what God wants to give to you. There's another one, Deontay Wilder, that thinks that malarkey as well. And it's a false belief. And it comes from the ignorance of people not reading the uh, Bible themselves. All the apostles died horrible deaths. They were more than likely all crucified or executed or murdered. Uh, but yeah, God's really got great things in store for you because the whole thing turns for you. And that's not true. It's a very selfish attitude. Now, I'm going, that said, I'm getting off of that. And I brought Deontay Wilder's name up, so I'm going to say something. Deontay Wilder has something that Ryan Garcia doesn't. And that's true grit. True grit. And he's one of the only few American boxers that even has it any longer. Our society's getting so soft. Well, all these belts are over in, in England. <laughs> They should be over in England. These people are digging deep. We're not in North America. See, we ain't going to have nothing in North America no more. All right, I'm going to get off of that tangent. And and now that I got lost half of our subscribers, I'm sure, over saying that, what I just said uh, didn't mean to personally offend you just try to wake people up around here i'm old i've seen everything and everything keeps happening over and over and over again it just keeps getting magnified in its terribleness the goods getting done in smaller portions and the bads getting done in bigger portions but it's the same thing same thing was going on in 1966 it's going on today it's just things are magnified more on the bad end. All right. We saw last night a tougher guy whoop up on a flashier guy that got a nosebleed and was looking for a reason to stop. We didn't see what the announcers told us we saw. That we're announcing the fight. That ain't that ain't what we saw. It may be embedded in your head what they told you you saw, but I'm going to tell you what you saw. I'm going to try to attempt to, and we were pulling for Garcia, by the way, and we're not mad that he lost. Not even mad at him. We're just telling you a truth tale here. Uh, telling the truth is not mean anger and all this stuff that people today thinks that it means when you're telling the truth it's really showing love even if the truth is not what the other person wants to hear but we saw a kid come in flashy kid kid that went from online started a youtube channel was asking for help rightly so for donations for people to help them if they go around to different tournaments. To the testament of good, decent people, they helped this boy and his dad. And that boy and his dad was Ryan Garcia, 
and his father. And we saw a kid rise up, shoot up on social media. <coughs> and he was the guy that was the first one, I believe, and certainly the biggest one. And kids started latching on, and people were, this is cool. Uh, and it's good. He's a positive role model for younger guys and guys his age and older guys. A clean-cut guy uh, to today's standards, not really to my standards, but to, the, to today's standards is some of the mess that we get to see today. Very clean-cut guy. Uh, but we saw a guy that makes millions of dollars, I believe a month, off of social media that does not have to rely off of winning a, a fight to be the be all end of it all. I win or I lose and it affects everything in my life financially. Uh, maybe like Tank, you know, even though Tank's set financially I have no confidence he'll hold on to his money. Uh, I just don't think he has the right people around him and not get this ain't about him. Uh, but we saw a kid c come in, get in the ring, get his nose bloodied, get bothered, get harassed, get hit, not even be commanded in the ring because Tank didn't command what was going on in that ring. But somebody just poked up that much not respecting his his own authority being Ryan Garcia and letting him dictate and uh, he, oh he got hit by Luke Campbell and got up it's oh he's done proving himself no it takes a lot more than that and we're going to talk about liver shots that shot was hit uh, right right here Let's work. Go back and look at the replay. That shot was hit right here. It's a very, very high liver shot, but I always tell people the liver extends a huge length down depending upon how your liver is situated inside your body. And everybody's aren't perfectly fit like what you'd see in an anatomy chart. But he hit him right here. And no doubt, I believe it affected him. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it hurt him pretty good. But, oh, there was a huge delayed reaction. The hit came, then he paused, and he went down. And that does happen. But generally, you get the hit, the pause, and you're, you're laying down, basically, in the ring in a fetal position. Uh... Too many people are going down by liver shots. Sorry. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, when people went to the body a lot more often. Guys would get these liver shots. They'd go down on them. They'd, they'd do, one of two things would happen. They'd go down, and then there wouldn't be no post-fight interview with them. Just wouldn't, because that's what happens when you get a liver shot. You're not going to be sitting there and okay five minutes later, nine minutes later, and be on an interview. Well, I don't want to tell you really what it felt like, but I'll talk about it later. This boy got beat up. He didn't even get beat up. He got a bloody nose, and he bailed out. It's as simple as that. A a streetwise tough guy got a hold of a 15-year-old boy that stuck at 15 years old. And no amount of 70-year-old Joe Goosen or no amount of this or that or the other is going to fix that. He'll have to fix that. Don't need to be a young man 
around people telling you how good you are all day long. That's the problem. And unfortunately in this world, my, people my age typically will not buckle up to these people that have money. Me, I don't give a damn. If I was with him, he'd be a different person inside of one week. One week. I'd be telling him, and then come out with a checkbook, I'd be, stick that up your backside. That ain't why I'm trying to help you, kid. Ain't what I do. You start handing me stuff constantly, and I'll start being a yes guy to you. And I don't want to live the remaining years of my life doing that. Uh, but other people have no problem with it. It's just getting gobble and getting gobble and selfishness and uh, let me get what I can get. Yeah, you're the greatest. Just move to the left, move to the right, move away from his left. Uh, an unprepared emotional guy got in that ring. He's never been emotionally prepared. He is one with speed that has made the strength. He doesn't even have a hard punch. The speed is the hardness of the punch, not the force. Or the speed in combination that creates great force. And we saw a little boy get in the ring with a man. That's what we saw. And you can't blame Ryan Garcia for this because he's still a little boy. And that's pretty much my take on it. There's 50 things I've left out. Uh, a lot of things I've left out. But uh, Ryan Garcia does not will not be winning championships until he grows up. He's got a lot of growing to do. There's a lot of things in somebody like Tank Davis's life that growed him up. And he may act like a damn fool culturally, you know, uh, to people that get up and go and do and are normal. He looks like a damn lunatic. Uh, has street talk and all that, but that's his culture. That's what that's how they do. Is how they act. And, uh, when I say they, I'm not bringing up race or shit like that. It's Baltimore thing. Uh, and we love Baltimore in this house. But uh, not what's, a lot of what's going on there, but we, love, we lo love that city. My dad was a big wheel vice president for a huge company that was in Baltimore. So we, we got ties to Baltimore. But uh, what we saw last night was a farce. We saw a boy uh, just literally get his nose bloody, and get riled up, and take a good strong hit to the body. I don't even believe it was an affected liver shot. I think he probably got the wind knocked out of him. That's what I believe happened. And instead of continuing, he just chose to take the knee. But ain't nothing really bad on him. Uh, 80, 95% of the bo professional boxers today choose to take a knee. Instead of choosing at that critical moment what is going to even champions, because a lot of these champions haven't been where I'm fixing to go. It comes a point in your life, you hit up a critical point, and it's, it's not a caution point, it's a red danger point. It's a red danger point. Danger, danger, beep, beep, danger. And when you get to that point, are you going to go down or backwards to get, to get out of it? Are you going to proceed on through it and fight through it and get to the other side? And that can apply to anything in life. Anything. And it comes to everybody when a huge challenge comes. 
there's 50 people walking around out here that could have been the chief executive officer, the big boss man, the big heavy, for major car builders, but that aren't. Because they got up in there and they chose to go back here and be comfortable. Instead of fighting through that little bitty percentage, which is like 0.01%, by the way. So, the setup. I'm going to go there with what happened to Joe. Joe was set up. We were hustled in. The, we went in the gym, hustled into it, world champion helping this other guy. Uh, get in, you got to do it now. We need you to spar now. Can you do it? Can you do it? And we go, yeah, we can do it. And didn't, didn't even have time to warm up, uh, blank our eyes, putting the gloves on, headgear, boom. And Joe was set up. Now, Joe still beat the hell out of the guy. But let me tell you something that happened in that. And, and if you heard any of my ranting videos where I raised a lot of hell over that. I even went down and told Mr. World Champion I was going to stomp a mud hole in his ass in front of all his guys if he ever crossed the line with me or my son again. But let me tell you what, how a 14-year-old kid rose to an occasion of having Everything set up on him. The boy had 12-ounce gloves. Joe had 14s. They had been in there warming up. A former IBF world champion was working specifically with that other kid, uh, being paid by that other kid's daddy. Behind our back, no less. Sneaky little shits. We go in there. Joe that ain't warming up, and if you know something about boxing, you don't get warmed up. You'll get you'll gas yourself out quickly. And really, we were not. Uh, doing what we were really needed to be doing aerobically to prevent gassing out. We were working on power. We just we do things a little different around here. We got stages of things. And then we add something, and then we add something, and then we add something. As we're continuing to do what we do. So anyway, Joe starts gassing out. The guy's telling him, telling the other kid in Spanish, liver shots, liver shots. And that guy connects with three or four liver shots. To, to the point that Joe eventually doubles over. And he's about ready to puke all over the mat. And Joe rose up and made it through it. So you got you got 19 seconds left. Cause he 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 took a knee. You got 19 seconds left and doubled over. And he got up, made it through that, and uh, but he was not okay for an hour. He ended up whipping up on this boy, uh, but he took a ferocious liver shot and uh, several, and they literally were trying to kill him. These little Indians get are very sneaky, and they don't care about each other, so they sure don't care about you or me. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but it's the truth. And uh, so, a liver shot something that's going to affect you greatly, and it's something you are going to tell someone how it has affected you. But to stand at the end of a fight, and be asked, how did it affect you? Well, um, mm, uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I'll talk about it later. That's somebody that really didn't get a liver shot, folks. 
I'll explain a liver shot to you. It feels like lightning striking at the point of impact in the surrounding area. It can go down your legs, up your arm, send jolt waves through your whole body. But that area, you've got a dull, a dull, dull pain and the most severe type of sharp pain that you could probably ever feel in your life. And all this is happening at one time. And that's why these guys double over and get in the fetal position. This boy just got, got a bloody nose and prob got, probably got the wind knocked out of him and chose not to continue. And that's a sad shame for all this money. And folks, I'm sorry, but that that's for in the gym. That shouldn't be to pay 50, 80, 90, 100 dollars to, to watch a fight on a closed circuit television or computer uh, or go pay 800 dollars to sit in a seat and watch. And as long as we keep accepting that sort of trash, that sort of trash is going to continue to happen. So, I don't know. I went this 31-minute rant here. I'm going to post it anyway. And if it's upset somebody, I'm sorry. I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. But uh, 50 years of watching this, good gosh, folks. Muhammad Ali fought either... From the first round to the, I believe it was the twelfth round, non-vital battle fight. So, eleven rounds with a broken jaw. Um, it's hard to see because it's black and white footage. But you go watch Rocky Marciano's fighting somebody. I forget who it was. I can't remember if it was Walcott, Ezra Charles. I just forget who, who Rocky Marciano was fighting. His nose is hanging off his face. Hanging off. No referee to jump in there to stop that. You fight till you stop. Uh, he went back to the corner. They said, look, we're going to stop this. You messed up here. They didn't tell him quite how messed up he was. They, they just said, you've got to knock him out now. And he goes out there and knocks the guy out. That's true grit right there. That's true intestinal fortitude. That's true backbone. That's true strength. What we saw last night was going into an area of danger and saying, no, I don't want this. And making tens of millions of dollars. To not go into the danger area. I don't know. As long as you younger generation keep accepting this trash, this trash is going to keep going. Because I got news for you, you all. Uh, news for you. Duran, Hagler, Hearns, uh, Or Leonard could mop the floor up inside of one or two rounds with either one of these guys. And anyone, probably 165 pounds or lighter. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Thomas Hearns was was tall and he was able to put on weight. He'd mop the floor up with Canelo or anybody going all the way up through the cruiserweight today. And here's how he'd do it. He'd just beat the hell out of them. He'd just go in there and lay an ass whooping down on these guys. And these guys would fold. Because nobody's willing to go through that 0.1% that they got to get through to be a true champion, to conquer the danger. And nobody's doing it. So, 
Blessings to everybody. Horrible fight, in my opinion. Horrible. I'm not going to sit here and candy coat it and think there's anything good about it. Uh, shame on people that know this sport uh, better and good enough to know that what we saw last night was nothing special at all. It wasn't even a very decent uh, boxing thing, boxing match. Uh, and we haven't seen fights in years. Uh, well, no. Uh, Wilder and Fury's put up quite a few fights. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Blessings to everybody that watches this channel. Uh, pure blessings to you. Uh, boxing is not perfect, but yet we choose to still pursue it and love it. Uh, but we're going to call out everything we can, any moment we can, because we, we want to see it better. And blessings to everybody that, that gets in a ring and actually goes through the chaos of it all. <laughs> Blessings to you and blessings to everybody else and blessings to fellow fans and uh, er good people behind the scenes that make this stuff happen. Uh, but we're going to be in discernment here. We're going to call things out. And that, therefore, that means everything that comes from us is not going to be very popular. It's not going to be very popular at all. Uh, and it's kind of a shame when you're sitting here with a 14-year-old heavyweight that tells you, uh, Dad Tank would scare me, but the quick guy, I'd completely break him in half. He'd hit me and I'd keep going forward and he'd be like everybody else and start running and fold, just like everybody else does, Dad. But the short guy, he would bother me, Dad. And for a 14-year-old kid to, uh, Joe believes in himself. He's very secure with himself. He knows he, he's got something going on. Uh, but he wouldn't have said that back in 1980. He wouldn't have said that back in 1974. He wouldn't have said that back in 1995 even. Uh, but I can see why he would say that today. So much love and blessings to my Christian brothers and sisters. I hope that God shines on everybody. And uh, I pray for protection and most importantly, peace for everybody. Thank you for watching this video.